Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do a video for you. So these are going to be one, two, three, four knives that I own that are modded. So they don't have to be crazy modded. They're just modded in some way, right? One of them is very simple. The other three are, are pretty decent mods. Uh, some of this stuff you can do yourself. Some of it you can't. Uh, well, maybe you can. I can't. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to show some modded knives I own. I don't own many. I only own four, apparently. Um, at least that I have here in my possession. Um, there may be some that I have loaned out. I loan a shit ton of knives out. I never know, <laughs> like, where they all are. Anyway, let's start with the simple one. This is the Kvist Bladeworks Variant PE. And um, this isn't, I mean, it technically is modding your knife. Um, I added scales to this. So this has fat carbon scales from Jacob himself, uh, Jacob Lundquist of Kvist Bladeworks. And essentially, uh, if you're new to the knife world, uh, you can remove the scales from a knife. Like this here is a Kubi Royal. And this has black G10 scales on it, right? And then it has liners underneath. And you can have custom-made scales. Uh, you can get them by somebody who makes them in his shop. You can get them from the company themselves. It's that kind of thing. And then what you do is you take the knife apart, take this black G10 scale off or whatever scale you have, and then you can put a different scale on to kind of uh, spice your knife up or just change it a little bit to whatever you want, right? And that's what I did here. This came with, uh, I believe, what color was it? I don't even remember anymore. I think it was blue G10. Uh, and Jacob sent me these fat carbon scales. He actually gave them to me because he screwed up the sort of counterbore situation here on the clip screw. And he didn't feel comfortable uh, letting me pay for them anymore. And this is actually a lefty version. So it's very uh, sort of custom. But... Uh, it's a mod and I did it. I easily swapped the scales. It's just something fun you can do. If you're new, you might have Spydercos or Benchmade, something like that. And there's so many options for those knives on the aftermarket that it really changes the knife. I had a blue basic bug out for so long and then I got a set of, uh, Death Grip scales. He's on Instagram. Check him out. Death Grip scales. Uh, my Carta scales, he did a black G10 backspacer, then I got some custom, or I got thumb studs ordered from uh, Benchmade, or you can get them from, from other places online, and it really just changes the knife for you, and something you've had for a while feels fresh and new, and that's always fun, so uh, for me in this case, I just don't like G10, and of course, Fat Carbon is absolutely gorgeous, I just love Fat Carbon, it's my favorite material, I think. And specifically these types of fat carbons, the full colored ones. Um, a lot of people like the ones that just have a little little bit of color, the dark matter ones. I prefer the ones with full color, whether it's this orange and red or it's green or it's blue, right? Uh, so that's the Kvist variant PE. And that was a very simple uh, mod. The next one is also pretty simple. This is my Kun Wu Knives towel. And this is actually fairly stock i mean other than the hole right here everything on here is the way it was from factory um my good friend backpack b brent he is starting to mod knives and he's doing it mostly on his own knives right now but i was lucky enough to be over there and i brought my towel and um he put a hole in it for me and um some of you may know how to do that already, so you might be able to do this at home. I believe he just uses a Dremel and a drill press or something like that. Um, so it could be fairly easy if you know what you're doing. Um, but that's literally the only difference on this knife. But it makes it so you can reverse flick the knife really easy. I've never tried a left-handed thumb flick. Oh, yes. All right, so that's the way to go because the reverse flick's a little frustrating left-handed because of the lock bar. If I kind of sit up on the pivot or maybe over to the side here, I might be able to get it. Yeah, it's just kind of tough with the clip flipped over. So I think I'm just going to do a lefty thumb flick. It still adds a deployment method, right? So I have the flipper tab back here. And the detent, by the way, on this 
is just perfect. Um, you have the uh, front flipper tab right there, and then now I have the hole right there, and then uh, right-handed, you can do the uh, hole for the thumb. You can do the hole for the reverse lick. I mean, right-handed, guys, this is just fantastic. Um, and then, of course, you have the flipper tab, and you have the front flipper tab. And the action is still as good as it was out of the box. Dead nut centered. I mean, it's just a great knife. I've always loved the towel. It really shows you what Kun Wu can do. And this was a $34 knife. Uh, $34. $134 knife on Kickstarter in titanium and M390 with some Timascus involved here. Really, really cool knife. But that is a whole mod. You can have that done by other people, such as Brent. I don't think he's doing that for other people right now. But knife modders... Uh, BJ Hill, they all do uh, holes for deployment. Um, the next one here is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. And this is the uh, G10 and Nitro V Stinger that I have modded. So what I did first was I got these scales, and they're from Cerberus Knives. Chris over at Cerberus Knives makes scales. And uh, these Micarta ones are really cool. I really like this Micarta. This is probably my favorite micarta i've handled i don't know what it is that he used i don't know if it's linen or what but to me this is the best micarta it's got a little bit of softness to it but it's still solid um i'm not really a huge fan of the canvas micarta that everybody uses um but anyway so i got those scales and then the main reason i modded this knife was because the detent was just really light on it and it had a flipper tab and when I can fail a flipper tab, it just really bugs me, right? And um, so it was a gift. The knife was a gift from my good buddy Jake over at Bearded Gear. And um, I, I couldn't just like sell the knife or get rid of it, right? That's just not how I'm going to do it if it's a good friend who gifted it to me. So what I did was I reached out to BJ Hill and it was literally a year ago. Because he handed it back to me at Blade Show last year, which is funny. Um, and this video is probably going to come out during Blade Show. Um, so he did a flipper delete. He cut the flipper tab off, right? And then he heat anodized the hardware. Um, and that really just changed the whole feel and look of the knife. There's no flipper tab anymore. And now it's just a... Um, flick knife i mean you just have that fuller that's all you have you can thumb flick it and you can reverse flick it off the fuller and those are your options um the drop action isn't fantastic now what happened was initially the detent was very light so i tried to bend the lock bar over to get it a little bit stronger and it worked but the lock bar became like really stiff and hard to move out of the way and if you guys have ever handled the Stinger, it's already kind of annoying because of how there's limited access and there's no jimping or anything. So you already use it like just sliding your finger across it. So what I ended up doing was toning it back. I tried to bend it back a little bit. And I think I found a really good sweet spot um, where I still have a good detent, but it drops much more than um it did before so um i, I really do enjoy this knife actually I, it's funny because i never carry it um you know i'll pick it up sometimes to carry it and then i just i don't know why i just never do this is still the same mirror edge on here that bj put on when he gave it back to me i mean i've carried this thing like once or twice maybe since I got it back from BJ a year ago at Blade Show. So um, it's a sentimental piece for sure. Um, and it's staying in the collection for that reason. But it's also a good knife. I mean, I've had a couple stingers uh, since then. And they're just hit or miss. Ooh, they're hit or miss. Like, you're either going to get a, a good detent or you're going to get a really lousy one. You can see the centering is meh. It's not great on here, but I'm guessing I had to do that. Yeah, there's no play. Um, so it probably just didn't want to center up. Now I had issues with the centering from the get go. Once I swapped the scales, the pivot wasn't going all the way through. It was just the whole thing. 
Um, but I thought I had, had it centered, but it's good enough, honestly. For something I never carry, it's not really um, worth messing with. But hey, as an EC knife, this thing is fantastic. I mean, fits the hand really well, especially without that flipper tab. Just feels really good in the hand. It's just great EDC. Um, I don't know why. I just don't carry it. And then lastly, we have the Aloni Knives Goat version 2. So this knife is my longest tenured knife in the collection. And it's only been a year and a half. So I just don't you know i don't have these crazy sentimental knives uh i mean like that stinger is one um but it just i didn't get it that long ago um but this one is still in the collection for a couple of reasons one of them is you, they're just not valued very highly so i wouldn't get anything for it i'd probably have to take a bath on it to um sell it and i don't really want to do that Plus, it does have some sentimental value. So this is the Aloni Goat version 2. These are like 280 bucks new from Urban EC Supply. You can actually still get these on their website. If I remember, I'll put my affiliate link down below to it. I highly recommend this knife. If you're just looking to find a cool EDC knife and you got some money to blow and you don't know what to get, this is a great option. It really gives me like Ray Laconico vibes and stuff, but it's got its own character to it. I always was interested in the goat, and it all goes back to uh, Slicey Dicey, actually. He had the original goat on his channel, and I wanted one so bad, um, and I just couldn't find them. Those were made by Tuya. These were made by Riot. Um, and then the two came out, and I had to get one, right? Um... So it's a it's a titanium bolster lock knife with M390 and the mods on this are when I first got it I actually swapped the scales so I, I had a blacked out one with I believe yeah with this red G10 insert and then I had one that it was a black handle I think it was still a satin blade and then I had this one with plain tie and a green G10 insert on both side inlay whatever. And I actually swapped them, and then I sold the uh, the other one, which was then black with green, which looked good. Um, and then I sent it off to my buddy Will, MB Wild. Shout out to you, dude. Um, and he actually anode the scales, and then he dyed the red G10, this beautiful Merlot leather-looking color. I mean... To this day, this is my favorite G10 of all time. I mean, there's just no getting around how gorgeous this G10 looks. It almost looks like my Carta in some cases, right? Um, and then I got it back, and I enjoyed the knife for, I don't know, six months or so. And I just beat it up. Like, I had scratches and, and, and marks in the anno everywhere. So what I did was I sent it off to the knife modders, and I had them redo the anno um that i had dinged up and stuff so i had this new anno on then they did the gold anno or whatever you want to call that on the hardware which i think gives it a nice pop of color it's really nice and then to top it all off they did a regrind on the blade so this is now a thinner uh flat grind beautiful belt satin on there and it's like I think, what did he tell me? It was, it was like nine thousandths behind the edge or something like that. Something just stupid um, behind the edge. So it's just a great EDC knife in my opinion. And I don't know if there's a... I don't know if there's a chip or something. I've literally never cut with it since I got it back, so... Probably just needs a strop or something. But anyway, it has a regrind, and this knife is just, its it's been through a lot with me, right? And it's been modded a lot, and uh, I don't know. It's just cool to have a knife like that, and like I said, uh, you know, I paid 279 with the mods. I'm probably into this knife around $400, and... Yeah, I would have to probably sell it for like 150 to get somebody to buy it. So it just doesn't seem worth selling, even though I rarely carry it. But it's kind of like my go-to little gent flipper, whatever. 
um, that I never carry. <laughs> Eh, I don't know. It's just how it goes, guys. But anyway, those are a few knives that are modded in my collection. I'm not big on that. Um, I have had a bunch of knives modded, but I end up selling them. You know, I've had Malibu's modded. I've had uh, Leon Ma's modded. Um, I've had other stuff modded I can't even think of, and I've sold them all, you know. Um, so this is, you know, one of the ones that's been modded heavily that I still have left, so... Uh, that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know some knives you've modded. Um, let me know some knives you plan on modding. Uh, let me know what you consider modding. Like, do you even consider swapping scales modding? Um, you know, I would probably just call that customizing your knife maybe, but hey, you know, to somebody new, that might be, um, very, you know, uh, crazy to do. Swapping scales. You gotta take your knife apart. Oh my God. Right? So, uh, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.